With us now are two brilliant scientists from Russia, Paulina and Jane, and Bill Falloon. It's a pleasure and honor to have you with us today. I can't you. reach you, but Bill, always good to have you. Thank you, Richard. So, Bill, here we are sitting at a table with Intelligentsia. And it is, I hate to say, probably largely because of these two eminent scientists. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I've seen their presentations. They are remarkable. They consist of what we already think can extend healthy longevity, and then they translate that into what is going to occur in the relatively near future, where people are going to live radically longer in a healthy state than what they are right now. Jane, what brings you to Florida? Uh, we are here with Paulina for the Hair Research Conference in Miami uh, because we work for In Silico Medicine and uh, we are focused on in silico drug discovery for aging and age-related diseases. And Paulina is our skin aging expert and uh, right now we are trying to get into hair research as well. Uh, so we uh, established collaborations with researchers that do research on hair. Uh, and we were very honored to speak here to give our speeches um, on uh, classifying aging as a disease and artificial intelligence in aging research. Tell us more about your organization, please. Well, we're based in John Hopkins in Baltimore. John Hopkins give us space. So we have a few R&D centers in Moscow, in Russia, and we have a lot of people all over the world, in Canada, in Israel, and China. And right now we are really big company. We have about 40 bioinformatician people work with us, uh, mathematician people work for us, and some of the geneticists as I am, and bioengineers as Jane. What astonishes me, Bill, is that they're so young and so expert in their fields. How do you explain that? This is an observation that has been very pleasant for me to encounter. Uh, individuals who are young and were not even known to me up until the time I see their presentation and I find they're doing high-tech research with the same objective that life extension has of ex extending the human lifespan in a way that older people won't fall ill, they'll remain healthy and they'll live for perhaps an indefinite time period. We are evolving that quickly and it's, a, it's an honor to see younger individuals devoting so much of their time to it. This program you're on is going to be also on the Shalom Show on television, which has a great connection, of course, with Israel. Tell us about your company's connection with Israel. We have a collaborator in Israel uh, called Champions Ecology. They have a really, really fascinating PDX models. It's a mice with an immune system that mimics a uh, human system, immune system. So you take a tumor biopsy from can cancer patient, from a tumor and you put it into the mice and expand it. And then you can test the drugs on these mice. And actually recent studies show that these mice with the tumors are equal to the normal tumor in a, in a human. So it's a good thing to test a lot of drugs, to find new drugs for the patient, to find the proper drugs to treat the cancer, to defeat the cancer. So we work with them, we use our pipelines to do drug repurposing and drug discovery using their models and to validate our predictions on drugs. And what she's talking about is combating a problem that every elderly person faces. It's called immune senescence. It's when the healthy immune function declines and unfortunately some senile memory cells stay around and emit inflammatory cytokines. So an older person suffers from chronic inflammation but inadequate immune response to new viruses, bacteria, malignant cells. That's why cancer elevates so quickly as people grow older. Their immune system is collapsing. Absolutely fascinating and of course this is an international essential initiative and endeavor Bill, you're involved in research not only in the United States but elsewhere. Tell our audience about that. The Life Extension Foundation is funding about 20 independent research projects at this very moment aimed at finding cures for cancer, 
ways to slow aging, and most excitingly, we are identifying mechanisms in which we may be able to reverse the aging process in elderly human beings. This is the research that's so exciting because aging is a disease that causes all these other disorders that we associate with growing older. If we can conquer aging, people will not get cancer, heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's as frequently. We can easily then deal with a few uh, outliers who still contract these medical problems. So curing aging will cure virtually everything. Jane, what would you add to that? Well, um I agree with Mr. Falloon and our approach in silico medicine uh, is that we believe the pathway activation analysis is the future to create new drugs to identify new targets for therapy uh, and we also do drug repurposing and the whole mission of silico medicine is to prolong healthy longevity. So I have to just to agree with Mr. Falloon. Maybe you should all join forces and create one big mega. That will be great. Well, what's happening is the public and certainly the scientific community is awakening to the fact that the resources are out there to make this a reality. And if we just bring these resources together, we're gonna to have synergy. In other words, the, the sum uh, of the parts is, is going to greatly, when it comes together, equal what they were before. So the, the secret to extending healthy human lifespan will be to coordinate, so it's a great idea. You know, the public has such a challenge in understanding the concept of transhumanism, where the human brain is going to interface with a computer, maybe a computer the size of a microchip in the brain or outside the brain, and confer immortality, perhaps, in an electronic form. Now, you were just describing how neural nets work, and it enabled me to understand a lot more how this is really gonna happen. Maybe you can explain a little bit to the audience how these neural nets are transforming our view of what the human brain really is capable of doing. Hey, of course. Well, the whole idea of neural networks uh, is not new because it was developed like in the middle of the 19th in 20th century and it evolved during this time and uh, the uh, deep neural networks, they are inspired by how the human brain works. Uh, and several scientists, they established a special doctrine uh, and stating that neurons are obviously logic units so that they can perform analysis uh, that happens in the brain of a human. Uh, and um, uh, deep neural networks are used in um, an area of machine learning called deep learning. Uh, and uh, I think that this is the future of how we can achieve artificial intelligence because uh, these uh, neural networks, are mi they mimic how our brain works and this potentially has no theoretical limits. Uh, so I think that this interface, the connection between computer and human will be achieved very, very soon because technology is now really fascinating and uh, the goal, the, our aim is near to us right now. It's tremendous. The way you presented it made it so simple to understand that this technology is going to evolve. And of course, Ray Kurzweil was the proponent who's written so many books about it. And Ray continues to believe that perhaps within the next 20 to 30 years, artificial intelligence and our own uh, biological brain, they're going to merge together. The singularity will occur and, and, and people are just going to have so much more neurological power. They're going to wonder how did they ever survive with just this biology in place. So it's tremendous what's going on. Absolutely. So Polina, what are your plans for the future? Uh, well, I'm trying to, to find some new drugs. So as I said, it's already clinical trials for metformin for longevity. But some of uh, the drugs, as rapamycin, have a lot of severe side effects. It's because the rapamycin is a um, mTOR inhibitor, but it inhibits both complex of mTOR, mTOR, mTOR1 and mTOR2. So it's really necessary to find some new drugs that will be inhibit only mTOR1 complex and don't have any severe side effects. So uh, for a near future, I want to find some new drugs that will prevent or slow down aging and particularly skin aging. So <laughs> actually I'm focused on skin aging because it's really accessible like tissue. You can do punch biopsy and find some new things, find some new biomarkers of aging on skin, on gene expression level, on protein level. So I want to find some new drugs because well, on market we don't have really, really good drugs. We, we have only like hyaluronic acid extraction, maybe some 
thing that can bring water back to your face, but that's all. You don't have any good treatment. Fascinating. And you know, Bill, our audience watching this show, wherever they may be, are listening and are very curious and intrigued, but I'm sure they know all about you, but they, I'm sure they'd like to know about your background and what made you get into your area of science. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, my parents kind of inspired me to, to go to, the, to do aging research. Uh, I get my biological, uh, I was graduated from MSU, Moscow State University, it's uh, like the largest university in Russia. Um, so I get my bachelor's degree uh, and a geneticist, but I'm starting to work with the stem cells because like stem cells therapy and stem cells by themselves are able to produce new tissues, new cells in our body. This is how we can rejuvenate our body. We can just grow some new organs. This is why I want to, this is why I want to research them. And actually my father, father is really, really like maybe not real old, but he's 60 now. I'm 22. And it's a really old kind of marriage with my mother. And I want to make him really healthy for now. He's still working, he's a pilot. It's a hard work for him. And he needs to have a really good health for that. Beautiful goal and beautiful family. Jane, tell us about your, your story. Uh, well, uh, I've been a very strange kid because uh, since I was a little girl, I understand that the, this is uh, this research, gerontology and fighting aging is the only uh, thing that makes sense to do. So I got my bachelor's degree in bioengineering and uh, as Polina, I graduated from uh, Lomonosov Moscow State University, uh, which I'm very grateful because this was a very, very good education. And right now I'm enrolled in my master's program and I'm studying bioengineering as well. Uh, and I feel very enthusiastic to make a difference to this field. Most inspiring. Let me follow up on this because what is fascinating, the audience has got to understand that we've been involved in this since the 1970s. And when I would talk to young girls about what I did for a living, I said, well, I want to make people live forever. I want to slow and reverse aging. None of them accepted it. They would rebel. They would say, well, everyone gets old and everyone dies. What do you want to do anything about that for? And I thought the, the answer was obvious, but not one person accepted it. Not one person ever accepted it until around 1994. I started noticing young girls were terrified of aging, they tell me. All of a sudden, the pieces all came together. Now, I don't know what major event enabled that to occur, but people nowadays are rebelling against aging, no matter what uh, age they are. I mean, older people are going in for all kind of cosmetic surgery, which of course is just a superficial fix. We're looking to systemically reverse aging so that people grow biologically younger. That's our objective. But nonetheless, you see the population is rebelling against the outward appearance of aging. And they're also thinking about the internal uh, effects by taking all kind of drugs on a preventative basis. Statin drugs are the most popularly prescribed out there right now probably because people don't want to have a heart attack due to high cholesterol. Antihypertensive drugs are regularly used because people don't want to have a stroke just because their blood pressure is too high. So we've got all this data and people are following it. So we are seeing the life extension revolution occur right before our eyes. Fascinating times. Wonderful interview. Great pleasure to have you here. And Bill, always a pleasure. And Jane, can't Thank reach you, you Polina. I wish you a lot of success in the future. Thank you for being with us here today. Thank you. I'll be right back.